Good afternoon, everyone. Please rise. Welcome to the Cade Museum for this meeting of the Rotary Club of Gainesville. This Tuesday, March 21st, I'm Tom Collette, your Sergeant at Arms. Welcome to each and every one of you for being here today. Please silence your cell phones. Guests, visiting Rotarians, watching on Zoom, please identify yourself in the chat. And if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, register your participation, send us an email, info at rotarygainesville.org. We begin our meeting today with song and pledge. Pete is not here, so I am elected song leader. And since the Gator softball and baseball teams won opening weekend series in their conference, you can cheer that if you like. I thought we'd sing, We Are the Boys. Are you ready? Gordon, you ready back there? We are the boys of old Florida, F-L-O-R-I-D-A. Where the girls are the fairest, the boys are the squarest of any old state down our way. Hey! We are all strong for old Florida. Down where the old Gators play. Go Gators! In all kinds of weather, we'll all stick together. For F-L-O-R-I-D-A. And now join me please in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now please remain standing for our invocation offered today by Lori Vidal. Let us uh, pray together. Heavenly Father, we know you are in the business of recreation, and we have taken recreation seriously in our community for quite some time. Our Florida teams are near and dear to our hearts, and I believe you are pleased as we enjoy moments of celebration and moments of disappointment as we vicariously live our lives through our teams. Thank you for this opportunity today to relax and enjoy a gifted communicator who has brought our community excellence in sports and creativity of expression in numerous ways. Help us each one to be good at enjoying life and all we do as we seek to do those things that are beneficial to all concerned. I pray in your matchless name. Amen. Yes, you may be seated unless you are visiting with us today. Jason Shank has the wireless microphone. He'll bring that around. Please identify yourself and your guest. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Greg Young. My guests today are my neighbors, John and Bev Dickinson. And ever since our, they moved into our neighborhood, it, it's, it's just become a much better place to live. Fellow Rotarians, Margaret Combs. Uh, this is Jerry Cowan uh, from Heartland, Michigan, longtime educator, longtime coach, and athletic director. So I thought today might be just right for him. <laughs> Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians, Jenna Ostis. And today I have brought Jeff Daubertine back again this week to Rotary. Jeff's joined the Cade team as Director of Development, and we're looking forward to get Jeff activated in Rotary here soon. Ed Ellett, and I am pleased to have as my guest today, sporting orange and blue, uh, my wife, Marcia. Welcome to everyone joining us today. We have two announcements for everyone this afternoon. Please join me now in welcoming to the podium with our first announcement, Nancy Hart. Good afternoon, everyone. April 1st 
is a Saturday, and we have volunteered, well, I have volunteered, hoping some of you will join me, to bring lunch to the Women Build Project of Habitat for Humanity. A couple of years ago, we went on a great tour uh, sponsored by Habitat, and Scott took us around, and TJ Pache set it up. And I discovered that there is a house being built at any one time in this town by all women for a woman recipient. And I offered to bring lunch to those folks, the builders and um, the other volunteers that show up to help them on that day. And I'll do it by myself if I have to, but if anybody's available on April 1st to join me and Susan Maston, we're going to be the rotary team supporting the Women Build Project. So just let me know. Thank you, Nancy. Up next, Mike Conroy. Is he here? Come on up, Mike. You're on. Here's Mike. Fellow Rotarians, we, uh, the members of the Rotary Youth Speech Committee, if you'll pause after the meeting so we can chat briefly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Next up today, we have a craft talk, and to introduce our craft talk today, please welcome up to our podium Colin Burroughs. Thank you, Tom. It's my pleasure today to introduce a quote-unquote new Rotarian. Paul Gibbs has been a Rotarian, actually, for many years, but a member of the club in Bilth Wells, in Wales. Paul and I have been contemporaries at the University of Florida for, well, since he joined in 1979 and I joined in 1980, so we were both at the vet school, um, living sort of parallel lives. Um, I, I was a small animal internist, and uh, Paul's specialty is public health and infectious disease, in which he's a world, world-renowned expert. He graduated from the, the University of Bristol, worked for quite a long while at uh, the Animal and Infectious Disease Institute in Purbright, and then came to the University of Florida. He did a lot of good things there in, in infectious disease, and I won't name all the diseases, but he was very much instrumental in the elimination of rinderpest, which is one of the few diseases of economic importance, the only disease that's uh, thus far a viral disease has, that has been eliminated in animals. He was a direct, founded and directed the International Center at the University of Florida, was director of that for five years, I think, and uh, very much involved in, in, peace, <laughs> in, in trying to develop peace in the Middle East uh, through the um, aegis of uh, his role. But I'll leave the rest up to him. He's retired, as I have, but still remains active in the community. Paul. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Colin, and uh, thank you very much to all the members here today for joining or for uh, inviting me to join your club. I've heard a lot about you uh, long before I joined you, and uh, uh, I have to admit that while I knew that you had many good things here at the club, I have honestly been very impressed with the range of, of what you've actually been doing, and particularly because it's very 
uh, close to my heart, I've been particularly impressed with the international programs. Uh, you know, university professors like to have slides to sort of back themselves up. So I've got two slides, no more than that. Um, and Tom last week, uh, to start things off, Tom, since it was St. Patrick's Day, or near to St. Patrick's Day, asked how many of you actually had Irish sort of ancestry. So let me turn it around and say how many of you, in fact, have got Welsh ancestry? And we, we have a few here. And how many of you actually have been to Wales? Quite a lot of you. Okay, so you know that Wales is particularly uh, keen to play rugby all the time, uh, since we've got a sporting motif today. Uh, Wales actually lost to England uh, just a few uh, weeks ago, which was absolute calamity in Wales. But uh, because Wales is not doing very well at all. So the, the background to my career was actually founded in, in uh, mid Wales. It's a very rural area, a very beautiful area, and a very safe area where I was brought up. My parents were both teachers, and on either side of the house we had a physician, on the one side with his family, and on the other we had a veterinarian with his family. So that was basically the recipe that made sure that I probably entered into academia and probably looked at medical science. So from uh, that fairly idyllic upbringing, I moved to the University of Bristol. Uh, as Colin has just said, uh, met my future wife there, played a lot of rugby, probably too much looking back, uh, and came out of that with a DVM and also then an involvement with viruses. And really, ever since then, I've been, been chasing viruses. Now, in this time of COVID, we're very conscious of vaccination. And uh, you may or may not know that just a few miles north of Bristol was where Edward Jenner practiced uh, in the 1790s. And it was from that work and his work in cow sheds. There were no veterinarians at that point, so physicians and veterinarians were essentially synonymous. He recognized that you could protect children from smallpox, and that obviously was the basis for vaccination. And by great good fortune, I actually came across an outbreak of cowpox very quickly after I graduated as a DVM. And that really then took me into Jenna's history, and I was sort of had the opportunity and the privilege to go down uh, history, history's lane. So that really was, was very formative. So from that point on, uh, as Colin has mentioned, I went to Purbright, uh, traveled internationally. Uh, and then on March the 1st, 1979, having had a brief period working with CDC, my wife and two kids, $1,000 in my pocket as a loan, we arrived in Gainesville. And we had eight suitcases. So the rest from that point on is very much history. I've been involved with, obviously, the students, uh, and that has been a, a great privilege through my life. And also then I had the opportunity to get involved with the international programs of the university, and I uh, knew E.T. York very well, a uh, great privilege. He was the chair of my external committee. And at that point, uh, I actually did speak to Rotary way back when I think it was in the Siegel building. So uh, that, I think, uh, brings us up to the point that you want to know a little bit about my hobbies, my family. My wife um, has taught for 20 years within the electoral school system. Uh, we have a daughter who's a veterinarian. Uh, another one is a physician. So we actually practice One Health, as you heard last week from uh, Dr. Aiden uh, in our family. I'm a crude carpenter, a little more than that. Uh, I like building decks, and at one point, I also uh, had this real racing car, all eight horsepower of it. I ran that at university, and only last year did I finally decide that I, it needed proper restoration, and I uh, sold it off to someone. Anyway, let me finish there and simply thank you very much for the opportunity to become a member of this club. I feel very honored to be a member. And I look forward to uh, further involvement with you as individuals and on the various projects. And I hope that was roughly about three minutes.
Paul, thank you so much. Uh, that was roughly about three minutes, exactly. But good job. I know there was a lot there, a lot of, a lot of history, a lot of things that you've done in your career, and very significant things. And I have a uh, four-way test plaque that is on order. <laughs> It's on order at the trophy shop, so I will be presenting that to you at a later date, sir. So thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to see you all here today. Um, I want to let you know that because of the rain last week, two events were uh, rescheduled to this Saturday. One is the Gainesville Opportunity Center hosting their car wash from 10 to 2. And again, you know about the Gainesville Opportunity Center. We have, they have funds from us to restore the kitchen, so they have a commercial kitchen to train the, the club members there on getting employment in the community for people that have mental health issues that are recovering and getting back into the workforce and into the community. So they're a great organization. Please go by 10 to 2 this Saturday at the Gainesville Opportunity Center. Also this Saturday, a busy Saturday, we have the Mill Creek uh, Farm visit, which is the retirement home for, home for horses. Um, Mike Conroy announced that last week. Again, that's another event that's being uh, transferred to this weekend, this Saturday. Uh, that will be from 1030 to 11. So go get your car washed, get the pollen off, hopefully the last of the season, and then head on over to the Mill Creek Farms or for the retirement home for horses. There'll be more details to come out in an email from me today. So uh, look for that. And now I would like to welcome Tom Collette to introduce today's speaker. Tom, thank you. You're welcome. Wonderful privilege to be able to introduce to our speaker today, a good friend. And I thought, how would I introduce him? Because he's so multi-talented. He's a broadcaster. He's a movie star. Who can forget the water boy? Award-winning producer. Comedian, singer, a professor, and an artist. And above all, a dedicated husband and father to a wonderful family. So without further ado, please join me now in welcoming to give us his talk today, Gator Great, James Bates. All right, Dr. Cawthon, you got my notes? Do you have them? All right. Thank you, everybody. Such an honor to be here, and uh, congratulations, and thank you to the new members as well. And uh, uh, Dr. Joe Cawthon is a, is a neighbor of ours. And gosh, we've been talking about this get-together for probably about three months now or so, and every time my wife and I would be walking out on the street, he'd pull by, and he'd ask me, he's like, what are you going to talk about? And I'm like, I don't know. That's like three months away. Like, and then, you know, and then, you know, as we're getting closer and closer, like we're three, you know, three days away. What are you going to talk about? I don't know. I don't know. Just we'll have a good time. I promise it'll be a good time. So finally, last night I talked to him on the phone. I've been driving him crazy. And yeah. oh, oh, there's my talk. Okay. You, you wrote it for me. I think you wanted to. I, I think that you were just waiting for me to ask. And then finally, last night I talked to him. He goes, all right. What are you going to talk about? I said, oh, I don't know. That's tomorrow. And he's like, well, I went ahead and titled your speech because you haven't given me a title. So you are going to talk about college athletics today. So I'm going to make it a point to not talk about college athletics today. I'm going to do all I can to not to talk about everything but college athletics today. Ah, there you go. No, 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 no. I, I, had, I had to give him a hard time, though. But, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. It, it fits because... I didn't realize that you guys were meeting here at the Cade Museum. I, uh, you know, I would have come a lot early. I love this place, love this place. And I actually was on the board at the Cade Museum, I'm proud to say, until I realized that we had to go to meetings. And <laughs> imagine that, being on a board and doing meetings. What are they thinking? And so, yeah, I just, you know, I, I would have some creative ideas, and that was fun. And I, they acted like they liked them, but then, I, then it was like, you know, an hour or so of, of numbers and stuff, and I just started drawing pictures. And so, but my, I'm very proud of my uh, Dr. Cade piece that's there uh, in the entrance. It's, um, it's one of my early pieces, and uh, Tom mentioned my art, um, and, I, and I love to paint, and I'm so fortunate that I can spend so much of, of my time painting and, and make it as, as part of my living. But I, I'm also, you know, a lot of times, one of my favorite artists um, is a folk artist 
uh, from Somerville, Georgia. He's passed away, but his name is Howard Finster. And, oh gosh, I think he was in his late 50s before he ever painted anything. He was a Baptist minister, and he would also there in, in Somerville, which is oh, probably about an hour south of Chattanooga, um, he, would, he would do some little handiwork for some carrying around money, fix people's bikes, and one time in a, a drop of paint that was on the ground, he said that an angel appeared to him and told him that God wanted him to spread his word through art because nobody was listening to his sermons. And, and so he picked and he took out of it, he took out of his wallet a, a one dollar bill and he decided to paint George Washington. And you know, many outsider artists, folk artists, are you know, it's they're to start with, most of them are a little bit different, these self taught artists, but they're also. You know, their, their paintings are, are those that when you go into a museum sometimes and, you know, you get people that maybe aren't in the know or, you know, and they're just kind of rolling through like, oh, my kid could paint that. My kid, you know, is, is the, the kind of feel sometimes. But he, what he would do, along with the George Washingtons and the Martin Luther Kings and, and the Henry Fords, Walt Disney's, uh, Hank Williams of the world, he would paint these people that he saw as angels on earth. You know, and, and not necessarily, uh, not necessarily these these preachers that that we see, or 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 even like a Tim Tebow, but just people that he felt like made the world a better place and made people happy, made people smile. And so he would paint them, and then he would paint them with angels flying all around them. And he would always include scripture, and he became, and still is, one of the most highly sought after folk artists of all time. He's in, you know, he's, I went to um, one of his showings at the Philadelphia Museum of Art there, the Rocky Steps, um, and he's just like, you know, world renowned. But what's interesting about it is a lot of times that, oh, the, the, the art crowd maybe, it, it's, it's not always the most religious of crowds. And so here he has all this scripture that he has painted in, into these pieces that everybody's collected. So he has really spread God's word and, and positivity you know, and, and these angels that he sees on earth through his art. And that's the way I think Dr. Kate is. I, you know, I mean, I think just what a wonderful, wonderful man who I never got a chance to meet, but I would have loved to have met him. His, his daughter, Phoebe, and, and his wife, and like just to have been around them and, and to see his vision and to hear some of these stories of Dr. Kate. So as many of you know, a very special man. And, uh, and I was kidding when I said, when I come tomorrow, I'm only drinking Powerade. I don't drink Powerade. I only drink Gatorade lemon lime and but it's just and, and like these stories of that when i was a member of the board that i heard about dr k that he would take all the neighborhood kids you know and this is way back when they're experimenting with gatorade back when coach spurrier even though he likes to put it off on his teammates but he said yeah they used to test that gatorade on us and shoot it it tastes a little bit like horse piss that's like you know that's i'm surprised they didn't use that for a commercial doesn't taste like horse piss anymore. Now we have Mountain Blast, you know? And, uh, and, and, but he's like, yeah, my teammates used to say, but I have a feeling that he would, it would say it too. But he would take, I heard that Dr. Cade would take all the neighborhood kids and take them up to the, the track at UF. And he would, he would separate them into groups. And he would give this group Gatorade, this group nothing, this group water. And then they would have them, like imagine, that he would have them go behind the high jump pit and pee in, pee in a cup so they could test their pee. All the neighborhood kids, hey, don't worry, they'll be fine. We're just going to go run them and pee them for like, I mean, like imagine how, how times have changed. But I mean, he, in his car collection, um, where did Dr. Paul go? Who was, oh, have you ever seen his Studebaker collection? I, I, your classic car, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's so special to be here, and and it's a. Uh, I'm I'm coming from the campus. Tom mentioned that I'm a professor now. This is my, oh gosh, it's I think it's my twelfth semester uh, of teaching a class at the University of Florida. It's a play-by-play on-air talent class, and and we have so much fun. We we get better. It's you know people are motivated. They want to be in TV. These kids, and it's a class of about sixteen or seventeen, uh, and so we just. Sometimes we have too much fun and the neighboring teacher, I mean, a couple times this semester already, we get yelled at just because we're too loud over there. But we're over there getting better and we're over there having a good time while we do it. And I just, I love these kids and I'm so proud. When Dr. Ted Spiker asked me if I wanted to teach a class, I just, like, I, I got chills just at the thought of 
James Bates in high school, up at Sevier County High School, same high school that Dolly Parton went to, by the way, up in Sevierville, Tennessee. If I kn knew that there was a class taught like the one I'm getting ready to teach at the University of Florida, it would make it that much more attractive. And I've, I feel like I've done so many things over the years and to be able to share them with these students and, and try to give them an advance and not just things on air, not just, you know, getting up and speaking. And, and although that is so much of what we do, these reps, these reps, because Tom will tell you, I mean, it's hard. Like, how am I going to get this job if I don't have any, any real, if I don't have any reps, but how am I going to get reps if I don't get a job? And so I just, we just try to do reps and we'll, we'll have conversations in class and about music what music and concerts they're going to and uh hey tom take us to break hey right now we're talking about country but when we come back we're going to talk about edm stay right there so so they get these reps and they get you know thinking on their toes and we just and it's just little things that i feel like i've learned in, in all these years since i graduated from uf but it's also things like yoga like my wife tina and i we we love taking yoga classes and so many times before the craziness of, of meeting with the coaches and talking with players and, and everything and producers before a football game, you know, it's now you're kind of on camera, you're getting ready to go on camera, everything's going wild, you finally got everything kind of straightened up on your desk, and you've got to kind of like collect yourself and take a deep breath, you've got to be able to breathe. And one time I was sitting in a yoga class and, and the teacher said uh, a, a quote that you hear quite a bit in yoga is, as long as you as long as you control your breath, nobody can ever steal your peace. And it just, it's so powerful. Just, you know, just the simple fact of taking a nice deep breath to help ground you. And I, and that helps me so much Shoot, when I'm on the road, just trying to, to go to sleep, trying, you know, when, when all the craziness of, of travel in these meetings, and, but especially when we're getting ready to go on air. So for about the past seven classes now, uh, I have a yoga uh, instructor come and, and, We'll go through class and, and work on just breathing exercises. And just because I wish that I would have known about some of these things when I was in class. And I, and I, I just want them to kind of be that much more advanced, almost like, well, you always want your kids to, to be better than you and, and do greater things than you. I mean, I feel like these are my kids. And my kid is in class. Georgia, our youngest, is, is, she's one of my students this semester. So that's fun. I actually, I actually today. So we were, um, this, this one girl had a great experience to go down with ESPN Gainesville and do reports from spring training. And, um, and she did a really good job. She did a really good job. And she remembered all these stats that she had to on Hunter Barco, uh, who's with the Pirates, is, you know, and all these great things, the number one college pitcher coming out and everything. And, but she started it with, hi, or should I, this is how she started, okay? I'll put it this way. She said, hi, or should I say, Ahoy, mateys. I am James, and this is uh, Pirate City, and, it's, and it's so I was just like, the thought of like being colorful and being cute with that, and this is what I, I like, put your heart into it. Like, like, make it yours, because a lot of people can read to me, and I can pick up my phone and read whatever I need to read like that, so how are you going to stand out with these opportunities? So we just, we all went through, and, and, and I felt kind of bad, because I didn't want to pick on her, but I wanted to use it as a, as a teaching opportunity. So I brought her one of my prints, and I gave it to her before I even went into anything. I said, I said, here you go. This is for you. I'm not being, I, I think you did great, and I think you've got good stuff for your reel right there, but there are a lot of people that can do just that, and it's a you know, highly competitive field. Everybody wants to get into it. Everybody would love to be on TV, but how are you going to stand out, and how are you going to be different? So we just took that like simple open, and we all went through it. We all went through it. And I had this like poster tube, kind of like this. And the one time I could finally do this, I got up there. And Georgia, my daughter, she did it. And it was just OK. And I, so I said, all right. So I grabbed it. I said, OK. Now, this is the only student I've ever been able to do this to. Georgia, I want you to do it right. And if you mess this one up, I get to smack you on the leg with this stick. And so it's like, but it's my daughter, so nobody can say anything. And so I'm like, so she's like, ah, but she knocked it out. And I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to get her anyway, but I could finally just joke like that uh, there in class. But so I'm coming right here from class. And another thing that Dr. Cawthon was, uh, was a little bit nervous about, but uh, I gave him a shout. I'm here and, uh, and I'm glad to be here. And I'm, I'm really glad to be in Gainesville. I'm, I'm so proud of, to have been a Gator 
to have gone to the University of Florida to give back and to teach this class to to help the community and, and, and my wife and I we we just love Gainesville and and shoot all of our all three of our babies were born in Shands and I mean just such wonderful people I mean that, and that includes neighbors like Dr. Joe Cawthon down the street just flying up and down throwing crap out the window I don't know man I think that's him I don't know but we just but but we love it here and it all started we just last week we were at the University of Florida for NCAA swim championships our older daughter Talia uh, she was part of the SEC team. They just uh, won the first SEC title, first uh, for the women since 2009. So that was that was really cool. And it was the first year at UF since 93, a team that my wife swam for, that the men and women both won the SEC. So it was uh, it was really special for her to be a part of that. And that's nine SEC championships for the Bates family because my wife won four, we won four. And then, uh, and then Talia won that one right there. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Although, uh, there, there are a couple. Thank you. Thank you. Very proud of that. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm proud of my roots, but I'm also proud of the decision that I made to come to Gainesville. And I'm proud of the opportunity that Coach Spurrier gave me to come. Because back then, he really didn't recruit out of state all that much. That was his golf time. You know, it was like, choose you know chase these 18 year old kids around or go golfing you know what's he going to choose and you know we had so much talent in florida and i would say 95 percent of our team they were floridians and those of us from out of state and coach of course was from east tennessee as well up in johnson city he would always use the his big hit with the out-of-state kids was shoot you got all these people saving up their whole life trying to turn 60 and move down to florida and you got a chance to come right now and you're 18. And it's true. I mean, it's like you don't go to Ohio on spring break. You come down to Fort Lauderdale, fun in the sun. And so, and we were just up there. And, and I hate to admit how pretty that campus is right now. It's, it's a beautiful campus if you get a chance if you're up in Knoxville. Knoxville as a whole as well, the way, what they've done with Old Town. And, uh, but the University of Tennessee is a beautiful campus. Um, we just got to get back on top in that rivalry because it's always fun when we're just uh, we're beating up on those Tennessee volunteers. But my mom, that's where, so Sevier County High School is about 25 minutes from UT, and my mom wanted me to go to Tennessee, and that's the only place she visited. I visited uh, Tennessee, Texas, uh, UCLA, and Florida, and Michigan, and the only trip she went on with me was to Tennessee, because I was going to go to Tennessee. I was going to go to Tennessee. So when I was down in Coach Spurrier's office on my visit, and, you know, this is, come on, it was, you guys remember, I mean, it was magical. Dr. Paul, it was magical back then in, in the 90s. It, you weren't here then, were you? Did you? Oh, yeah? Oh, you were. You, and so, oh, my goodness. Like, I mean, it's just, I think we I kind of took it for granted a little bit. But Coach Spurrier would, you know, go win these games and then go make fun of the opponent afterwards. He, you know, so he provided the wins and the entertainment. And, and I just, I could feel it just on my visit. And so I picked up the phone and Coach said, let's, let's call your mom and tell her. And so it was Coach Spurrier, Coach Zook, and Coach Collins, who was my position coach, Coach Stoke was the defensive coordinator at the time. And, uh, and uh, I called my mom, and, and my mom answered. I said, hey, Mom, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be a Gator. I, I told Coach Spurrier, this is where I'm coming to school. And she said, that's nice. I'll see you when you get home. And she hung up on me. <laughs> and I'm not making it up. I promise. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And, she, and, and I'm like, and I'm sitting here looking at these coaches. It's a big moment for an 18-year-old kid, you know, like, people are like supposed to be patting you on the back and stuff and and so I just looked at I looked at him like all right okay okay yeah no 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 was, okay bye you know so I kind of played it off a little bit and then two weeks later coach had an at-home visit scheduled for up in Sevierville and since I had gone back this is around Christmas time the Christmas tree came down that we no longer had a tree she acted like it was for other things but it was this was the root of it was this Christmas presents were returned and so Coach pulls up, and I go jogging out to the curb to meet him. I'm like, all right, Coach, it's, it's not been a real easy place to be the last couple of weeks. This is enemy territory, and, you know, he's like, thinks he can kind of win anybody. I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, he goes on up there, and he sits down in my house, and he goes, well, we're happy to have James be a Gator. And my mom looked at him, and she said, I'm not. If it were up to me, you wouldn't be sitting in my living room right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I, I'm glad we toughed through it. I, I came to Gainesville. Met Tina Bates, Tina Hinton at the time. We were on campus about 10 days. She was a swimmer, freshman as well from Decatur, Illinois. We dated all through school. 
and uh, really have lived here pretty much ever since. We, we moved to Houston for a little bit right after we graduated and then uh, out to Colorado for almost two years when I was doing the play-by-play -play for the Mountain West uh, Conference for their television network. But this is home, and, and this is truly where our hearts are. So anytime I can, I can get together with some of Gainesville's finest uh, people that also love Gainesville as well, uh, I, I'm always excited to do that. And I, and I owe so much to, you know, I made a lot of probably dumb decisions there in my high school years, but the one that meant the most, you know, I, I made it count in, in deciding to be a Gator. And, and I just, I mean, I feel like so much, so many great things. I feel so blessed for uh, everything that we have in our lives, and, and so much of it is, I feel like, has to do with the University of Florida, and that includes you know, meeting Tina and, and starting our family. And our younger daughter, Georgia, she uh, swam at UF her first two years, and she's now transferring. She's the one that's in my class. And then we have a son, Jake, who is, uh, he's a fishing captain, um, and he's just bought his first house up in Fernandina. So we're really proud of him. Really excited for him. So, uh, so yeah. So everything is everything's pretty good in the Bates house. And uh, now we just gotta win some of those football games here coming in the fall, especially that one against the University of Tennessee. Then I truly will be a happy Gator. But I feel like I feel it. Uh, I really like the vibe and the energy that you get from Billy Napier. I like his hustle. I like you know he's 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 gritty. He's a grinder. And it's you know, well, it's going to take, ah, going to take time, going to take time. And, you know, and then that's, you know, you got to give them a little bit of time. There are a lot of examples of, of coaches out there who have been given a little bit of time and they finally kind of get their feet underneath them and they, they show you what you can do. I just, I just like to think that the hustle and the grind that he shows, especially when he's, when he's off recruiting and, and, and trying to make this, this team better with, with personnel to start with is, you know, they can't help but, but match that, these players. And, or at least I, I hope so. I, uh, um, because it's, uh, like I said, in the 90s, this place is, is a lot more fun and a lot more magical. You know, even for my students, I'm like, gosh, I just want you guys to be around with like a, a winning football season where we're like just kicking everybody's butt and it's not an option to lose in the swamp and the swamp's rocking like it's, you know, against the Alabama last year or Utah this past season. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully we can get it back to that and in, uh, in basketball games as well. The swimmers seem to do, be doing pretty well, and that's a that's a good deal in the Bates house. But um, but that's our that's our thing. So that's kind of what what goes on at our house. Uh, and I, I also paint a lot, and I feel very fortunate um, that that I can somewhat make a living off of something that I kind of have always had in me. I never really took art classes, but I've just kind of always felt the need to create. And, oh, oh, my roommate was Eric Kresser in college. Danny Warfel's back up. He ended up transferring uh, up to Marshall and won a national championship up there with, with Randy Moss. And he majored in art. And, oh, about a month or two before Christmas one year, when we were still in town, right after we had stopped playing, uh, I had a picture of where Tina and I got engaged up on the Little Pigeon River up in uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And I asked him if he would paint it for me. And uh, he said, yeah, sure, he'll, he'll paint it. And, you know, and so the Christmas is getting closer, getting closer. He's like, oh, man, I'm so busy. I can't do it. But you like to draw, you know, because, you know, I, I've seen your drawings. You like to, to create. You, I think you can paint this. I'll teach you how to build a canvas. And you can come over to my house and paint it so she doesn't see it. And so I did that for a few weeks leading up to that Christmas. And I loved doing the painting and I and she loved it and you know it still hangs in our home it's such a special place and it was and I knew then doing that that coupled with we uh after we did the water boy I was down in uh South Florida working on any given Sunday the Al Pacino football movie and I just walked around all of all these places in Miami these great art galleries and these huge pieces and all this color and I just wanted these this art in my house but there's no way I could afford it and I'm like well I I guess I I could paint more you know than just the one that i did for tina so i started just painting and hoarding and you know and like just collecting so like i could fill my walls with art and then finally uh people talked me into doing a little bit of an art show at the old dragonfly uh where it was before they moved down to the corner it was the first time i ever had a show uh jeffrey meldon uh in town bought my first piece he bought the first piece from me um and uh and those were more landscapes but i I like to tell stories as, as 
many of you may know, and I started to incorporate some of these stories, a lot like Howard Finster, uh, into my art pieces and more of folk art pieces, and you know, and whether it's Steve Spurrier and, and all of those stories that surround him, or or you know, the fact that Nick Saban has won all these championships, but he's you know still like cuss out the assistant because they didn't get him the right little Debbie snack cakes or whatever it is, you know, I mean, which is, is another true story. It's just like kind of the lighter side of football and a lot of these people that kind of it tend to take themselves very seriously. Many people tend to take very seriously. And so I've, I've been, oh gosh, uh, I guess for maybe six, last seven years, I've, I've just stopped when football's over and I'm lucky to be able to have a job where I still call ACC football games and I can, I can, call these ACC football games, and then slam on the brakes, whereas I used to go right on into basketball and right on into baseball. Now I just slam on the brakes, and I just go paint. And so if you ever drive by and see in our bonus room all those lights on up there all night, that's just me up there painting, Dr. Joe. And Yeah, the Bates Motel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've got a, and I've got a little neon uh, Bates Motel sign in the window, and I turn it on so whenever I give people directions, you know, I'm trying, oh, don't worry about the GPS. So, like, because, you know, if they're looking at their GP phone, I'm like, and then just take a left and then look for the Bates Motel. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. See, you notice that. But um, so that's kind of me and, and where I am right now. And, and, and Dr. Joe said that it'd probably be good to open things up to questions. So let me maybe start that now. And uh, I can kind of just bounce off of a few of those things because uh, I know you guys have a few questions. Okay, Jim. Most important question, <clears throat> has your mother ever forgiven you? <laughs> well, mama said, mama said, mama said alligators are so honored because they got on teeth but no toothbrush. That's Bobby Boucher and the water boy, which by the way, so that part, that was a, a guy, you know, who loved his mama very much and that was the scene uh, from the water boy. I was, I was talking about mama and you don't do that. So he drop kicked me and said, 60, uh, 62, I, I love my mama very much. And now you know that. So if you guys remember the water boy scene, the drop kick, that was me. But I'm back, and, and oh, how do I put it? My mom just always, she likes to just kind of stir it up a little bit. And so once we, once I was a gator, she would wear all of her gator stuff to school with all those Tennessee fans up there. You know, that, that doesn't go very well, but she liked to kind of like, you know, just, you know, just cause, cause a scene. But on the same, she would wear, then the week of the Tennessee-Florida game, she would wear gator stuff to school, but she would call us and play Rocky Top on our answering machine. So, you know, I mean, she's just looking for a fight, basically, is, is what it is. So, kind of, kind of, I guess. Hey, James, um, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot, it, so don't answer this if you don't want to. What do you think of name, image, likeness as it relates to the transfer portal and the mess that it's caused? Yeah, it's, it's I mean, it is a, it's a totally different game than than those days when everything in the 90s you know i say that i say that gainesville was magical but i mean my whole life you know and my dad he coached in the nfl for so long and he, and he uh he was a defensive coordinator for about a dozen years in the nfl and you know the, the greatest coach i've ever been around and, and so but even with all that i just my dream all i ever wanted to do was to be a linebacker at a big time college football program to, and to, to be a part of that because that the pageantry and everything that is college football I mean that is from gosh the time I was about 11 12 years old that's all I ever that's all I ever thought about and I mean a little bit too much you know and having that dad it's like he called me up and he's working with Bill Belichick during these years and so you know you got to kind of like look over your shoulder you can't be on the phone when you're supposed to be working under Belichick he'd call me up and Jamesy how much are you weighing oh I'm like, oh, I gotta go to a meeting and it's like I mean those were our conversations but it was always how much you weighing how much are you lifting are you lifting and he's the, I mean he's like a he's very much a lovable meathead I'll put it that way you know and like he'll come to our house still and that's like his like that's like his hi, how are you line. He'll come in and be like, Tina, how much are you weighing? Like, he's like to my wife, it's just like, I don't know, Jim. Like, oh, you look strong. You look strong. Okay, good. I'm going to go rush, uh, rush the passer. Um, and, and so I say that because I feel like it's, you know, it's so much more like those professional type mentality and the professional type teams. The, the magic 
uh, yeah, it was extra magical when you win four SEC championships and then a national championship. But really, at that time, college football was just magical, and especially the, the teams that, you know, that, that were in the mix and in the gossip. I mean, it's nothing like it. And, and I, you know, unfortunately, I feel like it's, it's a totally different ball game, whether it's, you know, the, the corporations, you know, it's, it, it doesn't seem as real and raw um, and always for the right reasons anymore. And the dreams seem to be of just playing in the NFL. And, you know, in, in the dreams, if through all of this, NIL or, or the ability to transfer, I feel like there's so much of these coaches, even the, even the Nick Sabans of the world, they've got to kind of like cater to the fact that everybody else is telling this kid that he's going to start as a freshman, you know, and like, and so that's that mentality. And back then, if you didn't start as a freshman, you just worked harder. So you'd play as a, a sophomore and, and like, it's tough for these kids when they're making all of this money as well, but also when they've got everybody on social media that's telling them how great they are and, and how they're in the wrong program. And they're, you know, and, and these coaches now have to kind of recruit every day, not just recruit and get them on campus. Now, I, let me catch my breath. I mean, there's just, they never ever can come up for air because it's always, you always got to make sure it seems that everybody's happy because that, that portal is out there. Now, in that said, I've got, a, I've got a daughter that's a sophomore that is transferring because it wasn't a perfect fit for her to swim at the University of Florida. So I understand it, and I, I don't hate the fact that you can get other opportunities, but I just, when, when you factor in, for example, Alabama, oh, think of the kid's name. There, we had, uh, I guess, two seasons ago, there was a sophomore running back at Georgia Tech. And poor Georgia Tech, I mean, they, you know, they're, they're trying to, to, to get things turned back around. And, and, you know, Paul Johnson ran that triple option. And, and uh, uh, oh, um, Tom, what's Jeff? Uh, Jeff Collins. Jeff Collins was the head coach who was a defensive coordinator here. You know, he goes in there and he's got all these ideas of, you know, marketing Atlanta. I mean, and why wouldn't you? It's such a, a central hub for so many great athletes. And to really just, you know, the, the, the appeal of the big city, and, he, and he's just like working so hard, and here he finally gets a guy. He's a sophomore. He's the best running back in the ACC. Okay, we're finally going to take this step. Alabama decides, oh, we would like to have him, and they can pay him like nobody else can pay him. So it just, it's, it's just such a shame that those schools like the Georgia Techs, like how are they ever going to catch back up when there's so much money that's being thrown around and and the kids know that too and you know and i mean and then there are the coaches that aren't making near as much as the kids that they're coaching and trying to coach them hard it's football at the end of the day and it's you know when you got to coach them up you got to coach them up i mean that's what you know i live my life just not wanting to let my coaches down and you know and i just i just hope that there's still enough of that out there that they they, they respect and, and they they don't want to let these coaches down and not worrying about, you know, all the social media and, and everything else because it's such a beautiful thing. And, and this, is a, this is a team full of, like, the, our class of 94, we were the class of 92, the same freshman class as Danny Warfel, but it was the Javon Curses and, and the Mike Petersons and the Fred Wearies and the, um, oh, Reggie McGrew was in that class, uh, Fred Taylor, Riedel and Ike. These guys were all going to the NFL. They were all going to the NFL. But you never heard anything and felt anything but, but us right there. That locker room was all that mattered when we were there. And it was so special. And I just got goose pimply just thinking about it. I mean, we would like, we loved each other. And, you know, and, and before every season, they'll have these preseason magazines that come out. Oh, they've got this quarterback back. They've got all their defense back. Oh, this guy has run for this many yards. Like, but the one thing that they never can put their finger on is how much does this team care for one another in that locker room? How much do they love one another? And there was nobody going into that year that cared about one another more in the country than our team. And so we knew, even after that defeat in the 95 uh, 
Fiesta Bowl where we got worked by Nebraska in that national championship game. We knew that we had something special, you know, and, and having great athletes is fine, but you also have to have where it really matters, where you go into places like Neyland Stadium and it's you and your boys against the world and everybody wanting to see you bleed. I mean, that's as much as I love the swamp and, and you know, I, I mean, like, I love it more than I should. I mean, Tina and I met basically in the swamp there in Yon Hall in the dining room and, and lived in Yon Hall for so many years. And anytime it's a nice day out, I take my class in there. We just have class in there. I mean, just we do stadiums on and on and on. Like, one day they'll be playing bagpipes in there, like from Tommy Boy and uh, Tina, be like scattering some ashes because that's what that's all I want when I when I pass away. The swamp means so much to me. But it's just like, but that's but for us to be able to go and, and defend the swamp was always nice. But even more special was to get on that bus with your boys and just go and it's you against the world. Bring it on because we're going to kick your asses. And I mean, like, and to go to Neyland Stadium when they finally had Peyton Manning. Okay, now we're finally going to get him. We're finally going to get him, Philip Boomer. Oh, man. No. They, <laughs> yeah, no. And so to go up there and to beat him like that and to go to the Auburns, I mean, that that's just when it's you and your team and you've worked so hard together and you've stuck it out through not starting, starting. Oh, now sitting on the bench for a little while. And, like, you know, through all the ups and downs you've been through together, it's so special. So I just... Oh, I, I, I hope that we can kind of not lose all of that because I really think that it's, it's just it's such a shame that, that these I think these these young men and young women and in, in some of these other sports, it just it, it helps them to grow so much. And and I mean, even those that, that play a sport in high school, that was one thing that with our kids is like, you know, we're not going to be try not to be anyway, those parents, but they're going to be a part of something. They're going to know what it's like to be on a team and you know, whether it's band or whatever. That was one of the most important things uh, that, that we, we taught our kids was that, you know, we just wanted them to, to feel what that's like, to feel failure and to, and to rise back up and to grow from it. Oh, 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 How about a nice hand, everyone, for Blake. James Bates. Oh, oh all right. Stay thank right you. Stay right here. Thank you. Stay right here. Stay oh, right here. Okay. James, thank you so much. I mean, we, I would love to be able to stay here all day. Some people have to get back to the office, so I try to um, – uh, respect that. So thank you for coming today, making the time. I know you're a busy dude. And thank you, Dr. Joe. You wrote a great script, by the way, Dr. Joe. You he stayed right on it. I can tell. College uh, athletics today. <laughs> I'll see you next time, Mom. College athletics <laughs> today. Perfect. Perfect. Great, by the way, I want you to know that on your, on your behalf for coming to speak to us today, the Cade Museum will get a financial reward from us in honor of you for speaking with us to give to their uh, foundation for the uh, youth fund for kids at risk to be able to attend programs here at the Cade Museum. Oh, awesome. Right, by the way, I got to tell you real quickly, my neighbors came today who have a dog named Batesy, by the way. Their dog's named Batesy. And she picked out your painting, right? Walked in the door and said, that's a, that's a James Bates. So you're, you're well known. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank, thank you, buddy. You, thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Awesome. And thank you. For, you should have brought Batesy. Oh. And I have a picture of Batesy, right? Didn't you guys give me one like a long time ago? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you James. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. oh, oh, yeah, man. Oh. Give, give us the last three digits on that. Oh. Okay. Nine. Nine. Three. <laughs> winner. Whoever's the winner. And with that, we are adjourned. James, thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you.